Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Carpo's channel. Thank you for being here. I should say, welcome back to my channel. It's always weird talking about yourself in third person. But, this is Carpo's channel. Lucy wants to say hi as well. Hi, Lucy. How you doing, girl? Huh? You want to say hello to the peeps? Yeah. Yeah. She just wanted to hang out. Say hello, too. So, hope everyone's doing well today. It's just another day in January 2022. It's been almost, well, two years since this whole pandemic thing hit. And uh, originally I wanted to kind of talk about that and talk about just how humorous some of the ridiculousness is right now. I just finished making an edited video using a program where I put together a bunch of uh, clips of, you know, various news articles, things I've been saving over the last two years, all the headlines, all the clips to do a documentary. And I did upload a small uh, eight minute clip that I made to my uh, Patreon page for my patrons. I will eventually be uploading the whole thing onto YouTube when it's done. It might be a few months, but I imagine once this thing is over, um, you know, anyhow, before I forget and before I go off track, I want to get to the main point here, which is why I'm an anarchist, or why, rather, I support anarchy. Uh, and I want to just kind of define what I mean here. It's easy to just say, oh, anarchy is, you know, lawlessness and chaos. And uh, sure, when I was a teenager, I was, uh, you know, a long-haired skateboarder kid with a can of spray paint. And I would spray the anarchy symbol and wear anarchy pins. I wasn't a punker, but I'd go down to Portland and you'd see the guys with the mohawks and a big A on the back of their jacket. I wanted to say that's not the kind of anarchy that I'm talking about. But then I thought about it further and I realized it is. It's the same thing. It's just freedom of expression to be yourself without a governing body determining what's best for you. So let's get to the root. Anarchy. Anarchy. Arc as in arch like an archdiocese, a leader, it basically means without governance or without leadership. And I thought about this a while, and I thought, how do you explain to people that you don't believe in leadership while at the same time saying that you trust that human nature, we can dictate our own values and our own morals, and that generally humans will make the right decisions, just like dogs. Um... Humans have a tendency to assume the worst in each other. And I thought about why. Why do we assume that without government to tell us what to do, then it would be chaos? Because I don't believe that. The reason is because I believe in the organizational capabilities of mankind and our ability to uh, deal with our own problems. So anarchy does not mean that nobody's in charge and nobody does anything. Within, within an, uh, what you might call, like, say, an area where, say, anarchy was, you can't even say it's the form of government because it is no government. But what that still means is neighbors will get together and they will deal with their problems on their own, which they do. And when you carry this full circle, it might lead you to go, well, people will eventually uh, form groups, then those groups will be hired out to other groups, then you end up with the police force, and then you end up, that's back with government. And this does happen in large communities. So I'm not saying that today, in today's world, we could go to an anarchy state in this country and everything would be fine. The world is far too complex. But, like every other word, it's all semantics. Words are constantly changing meaning to suit the current environment. In the French Revolution, anarchy was very popular because people were sick and tired of being taken advantage of by the wealthy, corrupt elites that ran the country. There have been uprisings against governments since, you know, the farthest back in history that we could even write of, but history always obscures those. There's no reason to remind people that, hey, if they stand up for what they believe is right, then they can actually earn their own rights. But even worse, that people are convinced that their opinion doesn't matter, that they as individuals don't matter, and that they have to go along with the group. And I'm not just talking about socialism here, I'm talking about capitalism as well. Even the most hardcore right-wing conservatives don't realize that they are just answering 
to a different leader than someone else. In other words, freedom requires, as some, I heard someone say, you know, freedom doesn't mean that you're just able to do what you want. And this is true. There should be and are repercussions for the things that we do that are wrong. So even with a lack of government, the locals will take care of business if somebody's fucking around in their neighborhood, for lack of a better term. You see what I mean? And when people are forced to take their own initiative, then they're much more likely to do so. And if they rely on authority, then they become lazy and passive. And they assume that if something happens, they can just call the cops and they'll come help. The first time you call the cops because you got robbed or had your car stolen, you'll find out that they're not very helpful. <laughs> There's not much they can do. The first time that you have a major storm and you have to depend on FEMA or some federal funds, you'll find that they try to stiff you or short you. Or all the flood claimants that were denied because there's so much corruption within the government through insurance agencies. So here's what I'm saying. A lot of folks say that, well, a government keeps these big businesses in check. No, they don't. They do the exact opposite. They protect the big corporations. And in today's world, it's completely different than it ever was in the past. Since the Industrial Revolution has brought us into this computer age, now we have corporations running rampant. They can throw billions of dollars at any problems they have. They have all the lawyers. And it's government. Our government in the U.S. Their sole purpose these days is not to protect the country. It's not to keep the people healthy or safe. It's really to continue to protect these large multinational corporations as well as U.S. companies, weapons manufacturers, make plenty of money off of the wars that we have. We are constantly wasting tax dollars on these people who, you know, these same politicians who complain about Florida and how they're killing their population by not having lockdowns, and then these same politicians fly to Florida. All these same left politicians, for example, that pretend like they care about the people and they're trying to save you and protect you. Then you get pictures and videos of them at these huge events with no mask on, doing what they, what they please, just like everyone else, because they're full of shit. And it's very hard to see any politicians today that aren't full of shit. And because of this, I don't see why more people don't believe that we need less government. On top of this, another aspect of it that I had to consider um, is that I was talking about fear the other day with someone. And we were talking about how a lot of people who, let's say, listen to a lot of the far left media are fearful that they're going to get sick because of Omicron, right? They're wearing two or three masks. They're avoiding everybody. They don't go outside. They say they're actually f scared. And there are people who are scared, of course. But... I mentioned to them, I said that a lot of the people on the far right are just as scared. They're not scared about masks. They're scared about, they're fearful of their religion or their God or going to hell or not following through with something else. Everyone has a fear. And often the religious people, not to diss religion here, are some of the most fearful people that I've ever met in my life. They're, they're constantly worried about being judged not just by other people, but by God, right? An all-knowing being that, that knows everything you do. And um, even then, people... It doesn't mean that... You, even though you answered that highest authority, right? That you believe in an eternal salvation. A lot of these people still do horrible things. They go out and they maim or they hurt or kill others. In the, not in the names of religion, sometimes, but just usually people are people and they do the things they do even knowing the consequences, just like a murderer will kill knowing that they can go to prison for it or knowing they could get executed. And my point for bringing that up is simple. If not even the highest authority in the land can stop people from doing bad things, then no authority in the land can stop people from doing bad things. There are people out there who believe that if we took away government and oversight, that folks would run around and rob and do whatever they want. You would be hard-pressed to believe that a person who had lived an honest life, always worked, always done the right thing, always cared for others and helped others, would all of a sudden become a monster in the absence of a government watching them. Because if people don't do it with a God watching them, then they won't do it with a government not watching them. And the 
that's important because it means that those folks who think that there would be chaos if there were no government are perhaps the people who either have a misconception of other people or they themselves wouldn't trust themselves in that situation. Because I try to see in others what I see in myself. I consider myself a kind person. I won't put up with bullshit, but I definitely will lend a hand and an ear and I will do my part as a human as best I can. Not living in anyone else's standards and not doing things because I'm forced to. That's why I'm not a socialist, but I'm also not a capitalist. Because I understand that there, any of the isms, they all just... As soon as you catch yourself using isms, it's important to move away from that and think, okay, what's the balance between these isms, right? That's where the truth usually lies, somewhere in the middle. Along the lines of some people being scared and others being fearless, we need different types of people to do different types of jobs to create different works of art, or to have different interests, to make food. One person's interested in being a chef, and another's interested in uh, being a drummer, another one wants to build houses, and each person's going to have their own demeanor, their own attitude, and each one of us is going to want to make decisions for ourselves and believe that we, as individuals, are capable of making decisions that are right, without needing an oversight in a book of 300,000 laws to tell us what's right and wrong. So what am I saying? I guess I'm not saying much when you say, come right down to it. I, I know we're not going to get rid of government. We will always want some sort of a leadership. But if I were to write out a list of things, I guess, that I believe would be the most important factors in a functional government, it would, one, be accountability. That means accountability to the people. So you can actually go speak to your local leader. And they can interact with other leaders, other whatever you might want to call it. The point being that it's not a leader. It's a person who you can come to for help, but that isn't telling you how to live. And it is complicated. Because if you're harming others in what you do, then that needs to be dealt with. But here's the problem. In our current society, it's not dealt with. Because the people who have the most power are able to do whatever they want. They can buy their way out of prison if they get in trouble. Uh, you know, if they get charged with something, they can hire the best lawyers to have the charges dropped. And over the last two years, 99% of the earth, the population, people, earth, the, the entire planet have suffered and suffered a decline in quality of life during this pandemic. Meanwhile, the 10 richest billionaires have increased their wealth by double. Double. We have Richard Branson flying into space. We have Jeff Bezos flying into space. We have Elon Musk flying into space. And hey, if we think that that's the future, so be it. But in my opinion, it's, it's a, the epitome of what's wrong with our culture right now. That we celebrate that. It should be dismissed as a waste of money, a waste of resources, and a waste of fucking time because their interest is only in themselves. Jeff Bezos doesn't want to fly his employees to space or take any of you. Hey, if you've got some millions to burn, maybe you can get a ride. But it's always about money. And because of that, the money system is as well manipulated. Don't even get into the Federal Reserve and the fiat currency system and Jekyll Island and uh, quantitative easing after 2008, which b blew up the, the market. We let the government run our finances. We let them tell us what our health care should be. And people listen to their experts. And I would really like to believe, because I, I did read an article a while back. It said, can you imagine a world where, you know, the world we dreamed of, even 20 years ago, that look at what the internet could bring us. There will be a time when we can go and get accurate information. But here we are 20 years later, and like 90% of the people who look something up, they click on the first link on Google, and they don't even look any further. If you start looking to conflict your own discoveries, you'll find, oh, that wasn't true. That was just proven a long time ago. It becomes so hard to get down to the bottom of the truth, you have to either be consistently active in searching every corner and avenue, or you just blindly trust in authority. 
And that's where we're at right now. Up until a few years ago, you really could trust some of the authorities, some of the experts in their scientific fields, people with doctorates, people who their interest was really the truth and helping people. Now any of those people are demonized, censored, omitted, you know, deplatformed, whatever you want to call it. And we have these voices coming through who have financial incentives. We know that doctors were paid to smoke camels, right? We know that doctors who prescribed Vioxx were aware of the risk, which ended up giving heart attacks to 140,000 Americans before it was pulled from the shelf five years later. It's the government that allows these things to happen, but it's the government that isn't, that does not hold them accountable for it. You see? If the people found out that they were being sold a pharmaceutical by a local manufacturer that was killing people, then they'd grab their pitchforks and they'd go take care of business. You see what I mean? It's not that violence is the answer. It's that because of the knowledge that a person will not be punished, then they're more likely to just do what they want. If you have accountability on a local level, then that can be an amazing tool. I don't know how to get there. I really don't. I mean, it's a, I'm not saying that I, I want no leadership whatsoever. I would love to trust the officials. I just would like them to be accountable. And I've found that, at least in my life at 46 and the research I've done, the limited life I've lived, uh, I believe that all politicians become corrupt. That there isn't a person who gets into office who doesn't, isn't corrupt in some way. And even those with the best intentions uh, end up hiding things. I don't think there's ever been a fully transparent politician. And even the few who are, a lot of them don't have any brains. You know, they're just pawns. They only know what they need to know. And um, a lot has changed, okay, in the last five years, ten years, regarding how much the government is tied in with these corporations and why it needs to be dissolved, many of these agencies. And this is why it's important. This is why I'm talking about anarchy. Not that we need to mob in the streets. That won't do any good. We need to attack this from the inside out. The rot comes from inside. And we need to better teach our children, you know, to, I, I suppose, to live up to their best morals and not celebrate thievery and lying like we always have. Because in our society, at least in the Western culture, when a person is able to, uh, you know, pull off a scam or pull off a deal, it's considered something to celebrate. But we don't like it when it happens to us. But it's considered good business to make a lot of money off of a deal even when you're the person who did not really nothing. In other words, a middleman. And that's what the government is, for example. Between me and buying a lot of things, you pay your high taxes. For example, the sin tax that you pay on cigarettes or vape juice or alcohol. All these things have extremely high taxes, which are far more than the cost of the product. But what happens when you, you know, a person gets sick? Is that, does that help to pay for those people? Do they really spend, you know, billions of dollars on billboards of anti-smoking campaigns? No, the money gets siphoned off, just like in the drug war and everything else. Interfering with people's freedom and lives, and the worst part is that others go along with it. In the last several months, what's happened with these mandates, I was honestly shocked that so many Americans were willing to throw each other under the bus and say, yeah, I believe that, I mean, a huge segment of the population varying by country to country, but like half the people in Germany, for example, said that they're okay with keeping people at home and not allowing them to leave home at all if they're not vaccinated. And to me, that shows a complete disregard for human autonomy and freedom. This shows how far we have fallen to actually believe that our government should tell us what to do based on what we've chosen to do because we don't have the accurate information. But even if we do, individual freedom should always, always reign superior. It's just the way it is. It's the way it's always been. Because if we don't have individual autonomy and freedom first, then we have nothing. 
We have no individuality. We become cookie cutter people. So that's my ramble for the day. Thanks for listening. And uh, let me know what you think, of course. Can we salvage this system that we have? Can we improve upon it? Or does the whole thing have to dissolve? Unfortunately, in the past, empires were built on were built on actual like land or possessions. Today, everything we have is built on the digital world. So something as simple as a solar flare could put us all back to equal. So we'll just have to see what happens. Talk to y'all next time. Be safe out there. And like I said, uh, I'll be uploading my uh, documentary when I'm done with it. And there's a sample up on my Patreon page. And uh, I appreciate you all and take care of each other out there. Times can be rough. Everybody's been a little frustrated. Everybody's had some issues in the last year or two. And, you know, we can get past that. You know, just got to shake it off. Peace.